What is the average day in the life of a community strategist at Naughty Dog? Uh, answering a lot of emails. It sometimes feels that way. Um, no, but there's a lot of there's a lot of things. Uh, so usually, what happens is is so much of the stuff that we do is something that we want to reveal publicly, whether it's be a blog or putting a trailer together or just creating like art, like we've got behind us and stuff like that. So um, we have to help coordinate all of that. We have to make sure that it gets done. It goes to the right people. Uh, we have to like see what our community is doing online. So we have to basically like be plugged into like so many things and be aware of like what's happening. That um, that's pretty much like everything we do is like basically like coordinate all of these things happening that go out and then take all of this information in as well. What are we going to see that is the Come biggest on, difference on the PlayStation 4 Sorry, for Uncharted? Uh, for us, the big thing is that we're able to layer all of these gameplay mechanics that we weren't able to do so because it, it, it actually is really complex and in a way that we didn't really think about at the time. And so some of our engines, some of our technology constrained us. So one of the most visible ways is in our E3 demo or the E3 gameplay that we've shown before. You're seeing that Nathan Drake is on a rope that's like fully realized physics, like it's swinging back and forth. He's shooting on a rope, so you, like, you've got gun combat, but this rope is attached to a truck. It's this other like physical object independent of everything else. And if you look in the previous game, all of those things were decoupled from each other. We were able to start combining everything all at once, and that's a huge step for us. That's something we couldn't do before. From the demo, it looks like there's an increased um, amount of mayhem in the game. Do you think there's an increased amount of violence in Uncharted 4, or is it kind of the same? It, it's all about the same. So the idea is always to have this over-the-top action adventure. So the the situations that Drake finds himself in are always going to be more chaotic. It's always going to... It's That's the aspect that we're really trying to make crazy. It's like, how does Drake escape from the situation? But every, every other aspect to the combat or the setup has stayed about the same because we're always trying to balance, you know, whether it's fun, whether it's challenging on the combat side, but also does it make sense, right? We're not, we're not throwing enemies at you just for the sake of creating a bigger challenge for you, but really does it make sense in the situation and does it feel right? We have a multiplayer aspect, so we're always trying to introduce ways to extend that and we're, we're always trying to provide more content for a player. But we're doing single player DLC for an Uncharted series for the first time. We've only done it for The Last of Us, and that was a big experiment for us. Um, it's always been really challenging for us before to try to create like a more bite-sized piece of story, of narrative. Our ambitions always force us to go a lot larger, and it's hard to not snowball that into creating like a full game. But I think with Last of Us and creating Left Behind, it really worked out really well for us that we managed to be able to tell a short-form story, so we're trying to tackle it with a in. so we'll see how this goes. How, are you able to give me any information about how it'll fit into the story? Uh, I wish I could even give you a hint, but we haven't even thought about what that could be. Uh, and I was talking to Neil about it the other day, and he's like, yeah, we're not probably going to be able to think about it until after we ship, like not even like towards the end of development. So we've really set ourselves up for an interesting challenge because it's like we've committed to this, but we kind of don't know what shape and form it's going to be in yet. So, What's your favorite thing about working at Naughty Dog? Uh, really just being surrounded by all of these incredibly smart, passionate people, uh, like the really top class of what they do, and the fact that not only is everyone like really passionate about the stuff that they're doing uh, and really, really smart, but they're willing to listen to everyone else at the studio if they have feedback or if they have ideas or that sort of thing. So not that I've really taken advantage of it, but it's like I could go to any department there, and I have in the past, and provided them feedback, whether it's on multiplayer or maybe like art style or maybe there's something and we've had the ability to sit down and say, all right, we're gonna, I'm gonna pause what I'm doing. We're gonna chat about this and like maybe something better will result on it or maybe they'll convince me that the, the direction they were going was the right direction. And so we were able to have this conversation. I think that is really impressive that just because it's not my expertise, it therefore my opinion isn't valued. What are we seeing here at PEX for Uncharted 4? Uh, we brought in multiplayer. So there's only three places in the world you'll be able to play this multiplayer. We, it was in Paris last week, it's in Australia this weekend, it'll be in Lisbon next week, uh, and that's about it. So it's a really exclusive look to, uh, for everyone to be able to check it out. When will it be available? Uh, so we have a beta for multiplayer that runs from uh, December 4th to the 13th. Uh, you'll have to own the Nathan Drake collection to participate in that beta. And then the full uh, Uncharted will, be, will come out on March 18th next year. It, it's been a dream. I mean, when I started, 
I mean, I thought the studio was doing really well with Uncharted Grace Fortune, but I had no idea, like, where the studio was going to go in terms of either success or, like, how they're trying to push the narrative and video game form forward. Uh, it's been an absolute dream to, like, be a part of all of this happening. How is the marketing looking for Uncharted 4 around the world as well? How much exposure does, does a game like this get if, if it's such a well-known brand already? Well, it's funny because we learned from The Last of Us that we, we could really take the less is more approach in terms of how much we show and how much we talk about the story especially. And you're seeing that a little bit here is we're really not, we're trying to show the minimum amount of possible um, to keep a lot of the mystery shrouded. I think especially for Uncharted, there's a lot of heavy lifting that we don't have to do. We don't have to tell you what type of game it is. You know it's an action adventure game. You know there's going to be over the top set pieces. You kind of know what Drake is like. So we're able to sort of really lay the foundation so that when you come in to play the game, you're really coming into it fresh and you don't really have to have this media blackout that you know a lot of our community tries to impose on themselves. Cool. Uh, as a last question, what is your all-time favorite game? My all-time favorite game? Uh, so. I've really liked Juno you know Seven Cities of Gold. It came no. out a long time ago. So there was a game called Seven Cities of Gold, and it's funny now thinking about Uncharted and like playing, being in this uh, action adventure genre where you're discovering things. It was basically recreating uh, Columbus's journey to uh, the New World, and basically like you start off in the port in Spain, and they're like, "All right, go off and like find treasure for us," and you basically like. It was unknown, and you would basically travel, and you'd have to find new civilization or new civilizations. You'd have to basically like contend with resources and disease, but also this court that wanted you to bring things back from the new world that was interesting. It was like this great, like it was like a really small like window you had because they were generating this entire world on one um, on one disc, basically in the Apple and early Atari days. So it was incredible. And what was really cool about that game is. If you flip the game disc over and you played it on the second side, the entire world was procedurally generated. So you could play, you, know, you could really play the new world, but you would sort of, you would, it'd be cheating because you'd know North and South America and the Caribbean and all that. But in the procedurally generated one, like all bets are off. And think about that there's a procedurally generated world in the Apple two days for what was basically an adventure game is in nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for having such a, such a beautiful game, and um, I'm you. looking forward to this one coming out. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I hate this truck! Hang on, Nathan! I think the coast is clear. Yeah. All right. Pro Deus Cor Licentia. This looks like a simple cipher. Forgotten liberty. I mean, it's their damn motto. All the paradise references. I can't believe we missed it. See you two made it out, okay? Way better than okay. We found Libertalia. <laughs> Liber. Libra, what are you? Libertalia. Seems Avery founded the legendary pirate colony. Uh, it's more of a pirate utopia, really. Okay, but what about the treasure? See, as the story goes, this place provided a safe haven for hundreds, maybe even thousands of pirates, and they, they shared everything. Property, resources... Money? And they kept it all in one common treasury building. Okay. So, where is this commie? Pirate sanctuary. Right here. That island. 
just northeast of Kings Bay. <laughs> Rafe has a copy of this. Yeah, well, by the time Rafe figures it out, we'll be well on our way to Libertalia. I'm telling you, that treasure is as good as ours. <laughs> How's the Malaysia job going, Nate? Seems like you're a hair off course. <laughs> <laughs>